Hi, good morning. Um, very warm welcome to the analyst meeting for First Property Group for the results that we announced this morning for the year 31st March 2011. Um, my name is Ben Habib. I'm Chief Executive of First Property Group. I'm joined by George Digby, our Finance Director, as well as Jeremy Barkas, our Marketing Director. The um, modus operandi this morning um, is going to be uh, me first delivering the presentation, followed by an open session on questions and answers. So if you could please hold your questions until the end. Um, I'd be very grateful. Um, for those of you on the telephone, there will be instructions issued as to how you, how you ask questions at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to pile straight into the presentation, which I hope everyone has a copy of, starting on page three. First Property Group, for those of you who aren't familiar with our business, is a commercial property fund manager with operations in the UK and Central and Eastern Europe. Um, our basic business model is to raise funds in which for funds to invest in commercial property, to invest some of our own cash alongside those funds, to charge fees on those funds, and to make a return on the investment that we ourselves make. So we have essentially two lines of revenue, management fee income on the funds we manage, as well as profits arising from our own investment in those funds. Moving straight on to the results of the year, um, it's been a year of consolidation, really, for First Property Group. Our profit on ordinary activities from continuing operations rose by 13% during the year. Our net assets were up by 6%. Um, our cash was down, which I'll come back to later. Um, and our fund management fee income was basically steady during the year. Um, uh, earnings per share, um, basically uh, static as well in line with the um, broadly flat results. What these figures don't really reflect is the steps the company has taken during the course of the year to give rise to future profits. And that's best indicated by looking at the assets under management figure, which during the year actually increased from 300 million to 366 million. As mentioned, we earn most of our profits on the back of, of, of the value of assets under management. So one might have reasonably expected our profits to increase um, by a similar amount during the year. The reason our profits didn't go up by 22% in line with our um, assets under management, well, there were three reasons, really. The first is that the increase in assets under management took place during the course of the year, so we didn't have the full benefit of 366 million under management during the year. That will, that will of course, come through during the current year in which we, we're, we're in. Um, the second reason was that even though we ended the year with 366 million of assets under management, because um, around 70 odd percent of our funds under management are denominated in euros. And because the euro was weaker during the course of the year, it strengthened in the last month of the year as it happens, but dur during the course of the year, it was at around an average of 1.17 against sterling versus 1.12 at the end of the year. Um, we had a reduction in fee income during the course of the year. I can come back and explain that in greater detail if that. Um, explanation wasn't clear. And the third reason is that the UK fund, which, which really is the main driver behind assets under management growing, levies a smaller fee than our other funds, um, um, uh, our other funds under management. So basically, broadly, a flat year, um, earnings flat, profit slightly up, but lots of good stuff having been put in place during the course of the year, which should feed through in the year that we're now in. Turning over to page five, we have for the first time put a little graph in to show um, how our dividend um, history looks. I regard our approach to dividend payments as progressives. 
we have increased our dividend year every year for um, for very many years now, as that graph illustrates. And our basic approach to dividends is to increase them as profits rise, um, and uh, we anticipate to do so again this year. On page six, we've given a brief breakdown of how our profits are made up. Um, as I mentioned, we have basically two sources of profits, two sources of income. The first is our fund management fee income, which was broadly steady, as I've already mentioned during the year. And then we also have investments in our funds, which we, we, which we class as group properties. And we, under group properties, we also own two properties directly ourselves. And the growth in profits um, of that division uh, largely as, uh, as a result of the launch of our new Polish orientated fund called FPROP Opportunities PLC that we launched in October 2010. That made two acquisitions. We own 84% at the moment of FOP. I'm going to come back to FOP later. Um, but because we own 84% of it um, and the uh, acquisitions it made are throwing off profits of around um, uh, pre pre tax profits of around one and a half million sterling a year. We got 84% uh, of the benefit of that in group property profits. Um, so that's been quite a driver of the um, small growth in overall profits that we had during the year that I am now reviewing. Um, the contribution made to profits from our cash holdings has been low for the last few years with interest rates being very low and um, you know, continues to be a very small component of our overall earnings. Looking at our operations in greater detail, so looking at page seven, as I mentioned, assets under management increased by 22% to 366 million. Um, we launched our new fund, FBROP Opportunities PLC in October 2010. We had, before we launched FOP, considered um, really raising third-party money before putting our own money into the fund. Um, we reversed that policy during the course of last year. We, we, we reversed that thought process during the course of last year when it became clear to us that raising blind pool cash in advance of, of launching the fund would be difficult. So we decided to put seven million of our own cash into the fund and launch it immediately. We raised a small amount of other cash from friends and family, um, but we put seven million of our own cash into the fund. So we own 84.1% of FOP now. And as a result of that, we have to consolidate FOP into our earnings. Um, and it was the two properties that FOP bought that gave rise to the, inc the significant increase in the profits that group properties generated for First Property Group in the year under review. Um, our aim with FOP is to go on raise, now that we bought a few properties and we're establishing a track record for it, to, to raise new money into FOP and invest that money as we raise it. And our ultimate goal, if we're successful, is to create a fund of around 100 million pounds of equity, which should give us somewhere between 250 million, 300 million pounds of assets under management. Our UK fund is now 71% invested. We've got, uh, or at least at 31st March, we had 75 and a half million pounds um, under management for that fund. It has a total capacity of 106 million pounds. So we've got another 30 million pounds to invest. And we reckon we should be fully invested by September this year. We're seeing fewer properties available on the UK market um, at the moment. It's all gone a bit quiet, but we, we still anticipate being fully invested by September this year. And just to remind those of you who are new to First Property Group, we have a um, an interest of just under 1% in this fund. So once it's fully invested, we would have invested a million pounds of our own cash in the fund. Now that the UK fund is virtually um, fully invested, we are laying plans for a new UK fund, 
our intention for the new UK fund is to do very much the same thing that our existing UK fund is doing. Um, and, and, and by that, just to summarize, again, for those of you who are new to the group, um, our aim will be to buy recessionary resilient properties, ideally discount retailers, where rents have been reset in 2009 or later. And I'm happy to take questions um, on our investment strategy um, at the end of this presentation. I think one of the most important things that we achieved last year which is really a function of our work over the last five years, is that we retained our ranking as the best performing fund manager in Poland and Central and Eastern Europe, this time for the five years, the 31st December 2010, in amongst a population of around 28 fund managers. Um, we were ranked the best performing fund manager for CEE for the three years, the 31st December 08. At that time, they didn't have a Polish index. Um, and then we were ranked the best performing fund manager for the four years to 31st December 2009. And we're now ranked the best performing fund manager for the five years to 31st December 2010. And um, in a sense, this is perhaps the most important operational highlight because the future of First Property Group turns entirely on our performance and track record. And so we're very pleased with um, now having been ranked at the top of this this table for the last three years. During the year, we also disposed of our interest in First Property Services uh, Limited. First Property Services Limited was a mechanical and electrical um, uh, contractor that we acquired for a pound in February 2006. They contributed very well to our earnings during the time of their ownership. I think in total we earned um, close on a million pounds out of uh, First Property Services, and that was all sort of cash. But in the last year and a half, with the credit crunch, their uh, profitability dropped dramatically. And in the year in which um, this disposal took place, um, they turned into a small loss. Um, so we sold our 60% to the managing director of First Property Services, who um, owned the other 40% prior to the sale of this 60%. Um, we sold it for £170,000, didn't really book a material profit on that sale. Um, of the £170,000, £20,000 has been paid up front, and he's due to pay us the remaining 150000 over the next year and a half, two years. He was given two years from the date of the sale in which to, to, to pay it. Um, we think that the sale of First Property service, Services, whilst a small aspect of our business, um, clarifies our business model. Um, a number of shareholders in First Property Group had inquired of me why we owned it, um, and I think the sale clarifies it. And incidentally, if anyone's still asking why we ever bought it, we bought it because it was cost, a, cost us a pound, and we could see it was going to make a lot of money, so it was an opportunistic buy, um, and that proved to be the case. On page eight, we've provided for the first time a table breaking down our assets under management by the various funds that we manage. You can see the most important fund in terms of value of assets under management is the USS FPROP Managed Property Portfolio LP, which has a life ending in August 2015. We managed 250 million pounds worth of property for USS. Um, the task, therefore, for First Property Group is to balance our exposure to the USS fund over the next few years, and we hope to do that um, through the new UK fund, which we're very nearly fully invested with, with FOP, which we hope to grow to a 250-300 million pound fund in due course, um, and with the launch of the new UK fund that I mentioned we're putting plans in place to, to, to launch soon. On page nine, we've given a breakdown of the various contributions to um, assets under management by fund, by investor category, and by geography. Um, I don't intend to go through this 
in any detail, but the figures are there for anyone who's interested in reviewing how our various assets under management are comprised. Moving on to group properties, which is a significant part of our earnings, so turning to page 10 of the presentation, um, you can see that we own 37% of fifth property trading, just under 29% of regional property trading, and uh, just under 1% of, of our UK fund. And as I've already mentioned, we own 84% of FOP, um, which we intend to dilute down by raising new capital as we go forward. And the earnings that we made as a group coming from these various funds are broken down on the right-hand side of this table. So roughly, these funds generated a total profit of £450,000 for the year in question for First Property Group, PLC. On page 11, also under group properties, we've provided a table of the two properties that we own directly in the group. The first is what I've described in the past and continue to describe as a dysfunctional office block um, in a residential part of Warsaw. I call it dysfunctional because it's an awful building to look at. It's ripe for redevelopment. Um, and I'm pleased to say that we have secured planning consent to convert it to um, uh, into residential use. Um, Notwithstanding its dysfunctionality, it's yielding us um, an annual profit of around 280,000 a year, and it's extremely well let. If I were to show you the tenancy schedule, you'd see that some of the leases are, are, are quite long, particularly by Polish standards. So it's producing a very healthy rate of return on the 2.3 million pounds we paid to buy it. It was valued recently at 12.8 million zlotys or 2.8 million pounds, so the value of the property has gone up. Um, we hold value, the property is in our balance sheet at cost, not value. So we are holding it at a cost of 2.3 million pounds in our balance sheet. Um, our aim with this property now that we've got residential consent for it is to sell it in due course if we get an appropriate price for it. If we're unable to get what we feel is a fair price for it, we'll just continue to own it because it's throwing off a high level of profit for us. One of the best acquisitions I've made in my career, I think, is the other property that we own, which is a 28% interest in a, in a prime uh, uh, office block in Warsaw. It's, it, it's, it's in a prime location. It's actually a Class B building. Um, in an absolutely prime location next to a, um, a tube station for the only tube line in Warsaw. We bought the property in the teeth of the credit crunch in December 2008. We paid £8.5 million pounds to buy it. The actual purchase was denominated in dollars, so we paid $12.9 million back in um, 2008 to buy it. It's now valued at $18.4 million dollars or 11.5 million pounds. We hold it in the balance sheet at 8.5 million pounds. Since buying it, we've increased the costs on the pro uh, increased the, um, sorry, increased the rent payable on the property. We've elongated leases, and we've cut the costs of managing the property quite dramatically. The pre-tax profit contribution that this property made in the year under review was 498,000 pounds. That profit includes the increment in rent that we've achieved in the property, but it doesn't really reflect the cost savings we've made in the property because the cost savings were made during the year and they will only really come out in the year um, that we're now, re now in. So we expect earnings from this property to increase for the year to 31st March 2012. As it is, um, for those of you who've done a very quick calculation, you can see that it's generating, or in the year that's just ended, it generated a rate of return on equity of, of around 35%, um, which is massive, and we expect that to rise this year to around 48% rate of return on equity. Um, that's been a very, very good acquisition for the group. There are still other things we can do with that building to enhance its earnings, and we will continue to 
to work the asset as best we can going forward. So looking at how group properties has contributed its earnings to us, the, this is on page 12. We've provided a bar chart showing um, the various sources of profitability um, in group properties. The two properties, the two direct properties we own, this dysfunctional office block and this wonderful prime uh, location office block in central Warsaw, produce the bulk of direct of group properties profit, um, as evidenced by the chart. And our fund shareholdings have been very steady, producing a respectable um, level of profit, which, when aggregated with FOP, equates to about £450,000. We expect, looking forward this year, unless we raise significant new money into FOP, we expect the profitability from FOP to rise quite dramatically too. You would have noticed that its contribution was only a quarter of a million pounds in the year um, under consideration, but it's actually generating a profit of around 1.3 million a year, of which 84% would be ours. So we expect a significant increase in profits coming off FOP for the year to 31st December 2012, unless we raise new money into FOP. And this, I suppose, is a slight idiosyncrasy in our business model that I ought to elaborate on. Because our aim is to raise new money, even though it would be a very positive step if we were able to raise new money into FOP, what it does mean in the short term is that the earnings that we would earn from FOP directly as a, as a result of our own investment in it would reduce. The extent of that reduction will depend on how much new cash we raise into FOP and how long it takes us to invest that new cash. Our aim would obviously be to minimize that time frame and to try and raise new money at more or less the same time as investing it. But, but whatever happens, I think it's fair to say that we'll expect a material uplift in FOP's contribution to group properties profits this year. As I've touched on earlier, the fundraising market at the moment is not easy. Um, I think it's credit to the group and to Jeremy Barkas's effort as marketing director that we were able to raise a new UK fund in February 2010. Um, I think it's a, as a result of our good track record that we were able to do that. Um, uh, looking forward, I think our, our, our track record will continue to assist us in our endeavors to raise money. But raising blind pools of cash in the manner that we have done in the past is not easy. Um, and, you know, we, we believe that we will be successful, but what we can't be certain of is the time frame in which we, we you know, that we will achieve the success. Um, it's easier for us to raise new money for joint ventures in property deals. And if we're unable to raise blind pools of cash, we will endeavor to joint venture property purchases so that our assets under management grow in a, in a different manner. I've already spoken about FOP, so um, I won't go over the idiosyncrasies of raising new money to FOP again. What I will just say is that we are talking to one potential significant investor to make an investment in FOP. Um, uh, we, we haven't got the results of those discussions yet, and naturally we'll, um, we'll keep shareholders abreast of our efforts to raise new money. Looking forward, at a sort of macro level, this is on page 14, Poland is obviously key to First Property Group's success. 75% um, of our assets under management are located in Poland. It's been a tremendous country to have invested in during the credit crunch. Income on our properties has been incredibly stable during what has been an otherwise in very volatile period for the, for the globe. Um, we are now seeing tenant demand rising in Poland. Um, we're getting calls for, from prospective tenants to take space in our Blue Tower building as well as, as, well as other buildings that we own. For the first time since the credit crunch kicked off, we're now able to lay plans to increase the size of the various properties we own. And for example, we're looking at increasing 
by about 5,000, from 15,000 square meters to 20,000 square meters, the size of one of the shopping centers that we manage on behalf of the USS Fund. This is all very liberating for a fund manager because it means we're allowed for the first time to exercise our skills in growing the value of assets through our active asset management. Really, the last three years has been more about protecting the value of assets rather than driving them forward. But with the economy now in Poland clipping along nicely at 4% GDP growth, um, you know, the time is right to be looking at expansionist um, activities for funds under management. And that should all feed through into higher values um, and hopefully performance fees in due course. The UK, on the other hand, looking at page 15, the UK, on the other hand, remains um, a sick economy. Um, and rather peculiarly, even though it, it's sick, it has, at least the prime central London market, has attracted a lot of foreign money that sees London as a safe environment in which to invest. So we've got a slight disconnect, in my view, in what's happening in the London property. Prices have risen um, without fundamental occupational demand rising. Depending on who you speak to, people will tell you that rents are rising. In my experience, that's quite a selective um, view of the market. There may be some properties where rents are rising, but actually I think the broad tenor is basically flat, um, even for prime London properties. And when you leave London, the picture is much worse, of course. Um, and so our approach to buying property, because we can't justify buying pr prime London property, our approach to buying property is to buy recessionary resilient property um, in the provinces. Um, and we're looking at buying discount retailers where leases have been, re where rents have been set with new leases or, re or leases re-geared. Um, in 2009 or after 2009. Um, we're obviously very nervous of Scotland, where 45% of employment is governed in, government employment, um, and the north of England, where similar figures um, are the case, and as the government cuts back, that's naturally going to have a disproportionately bad effect on property in those regions. It doesn't mean we won't buy property there, but we are very selective in the way we assess it um, when we consider the location. So a very risk-averse approach to the UK, and that will be um, you know, very much the case for the new UK fund that we hope to launch. And then the outlook on page 16, well, I think I've more or less said it. Um, the work we did last year in growing assets under management should feed through into earnings this year. As long as the euro doesn't weaken dramatically, we would expect earnings on our funds under our existing funds under management as well as the new UK funds under management to uh, increase. Um, we also expect to invest the rest of our UK fund, which should further assist earnings, and we intend to uh, raise new money into FOP and spend that money on new properties, which again should raise uh, our earnings in due course. The manner of that, as I mentioned, could be peculiar because of the dilutive, the initial dilutive effect of raising new money into FOB. <coughs> Group properties, we expect to continue to make a good contribution to our profitability, both from the investments we have in our funds, as well as, um, and I'm really looking at Blue Tower now, um, on the feed through of the cost savings we made in the building last year. And I think that I will let shareholders and attendances, attendees of this, of this presentation read the rest of the pages themselves in this presentation. They're really background information. So um, what I would like to do now is open up the conference call and presentation to questions, either in the room or on the phone. And I think that the operator of this call is now going to issue a few instructions to those of you who are on the telephone, explaining to you how you can ask questions if you wish to. Thank you. If you have a question, please press star then one on your touchtone phone. 
Once again, if you have a question, please press star, then one on your touchtone phone. We, we have a question in the room, so perhaps if I take that question first. Um, can you tell me, what is the term of release on the Caracol hard market in Lodz? Because I'm surprised that Caracol will be on a high yield. The term of the lease is December 2021, and that lease is guaranteed by Carrefour's parent company. Um, and uh, I mean, it's, it, you're right to be surprised by the high yield. A similar property in the UK would probably trade at a yield of about 5%. Um, and in your question, you've actually illustrated why we're attracted to Poland, because we can buy a car for on an 8%, whereas the alternative um, in the, the, the same sort of similar property in the UK would be down at a much, much lower yield. I, 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 you still think of supply of suitable properties in Poland that you'd be attracted to purchase? We are. Our approach in Poland is, um, because of the macro, I, I didn't really delve on it in particular detail, but because of the healthy macroeconomic picture um, and because of the speed at which retail spending is rising and the Polish consumer is getting richer, um, and just to put that into context, retail spending for the year to 30th April 2011 increased by 18% in Poland. Um, because of that, we're attracted to shopping centers and uh, retail warehousing in Poland. Um, and we're seeing a number of very interesting opportunities at the moment. So we would hope that if we're able to raise new money into FOP, that we could invest it well quite quickly. You mentioned you were getting inquiries for tenancies for Blue Town. What's your occupancy rate in Poland or in Blue Town in particular? Well, in Blue Town, it's 100% at the moment. So you're um, having to turn the work? We're turning the, uh, we're turning the request away. It's a multi-let building, so we have tenancies renewing all the time. Um, when we bought the building in December 2008, all the leases expired in December 2010. And since we bought it, I, I can't tell you offhand what the wait, weighted average unexpired lease term is, but we've got lease expiries now ranging through to 2017 in the building. So um, we've improved the lease expiry um, profile of the property dramatically, as well as pushing rents up, and we are now at the moment turning away in, in tenants because we, we simply haven't got space for them. What we are trying to do is buy more of the building, um, and that might then open up the opportunity to do the same thing again. Did, did that answer your question? Yeah. And sorry, on the, you also asked about the property portfolio. We have run, throughout the credit crunch, we've run at a very, very high level of occupancy. I can't give you the exact figure, but if I was to guess, I'd say about 98.5%, 99% occupancy throughout the credit crunch. And that is the fundamental difference between how the Polish economy has performed and how the UK economy has performed. I know before we started this presentation, you mentioned you saw a lot of vacant shops around the vicinity where you live. And that is what's happened in the UK. There have been very many delinquencies. Woolworths, perhaps, is the most notable uh, household name on the high street to have gone down. We haven't seen that in Poland. Any questions on the telephone? We have no questions at this time. No. Well, if there aren't any other questions, I suggest we bring the presentation to a close. Is the Um, very interesting question. Poles love to be car born, even though they have a very good tram system in Warsaw, people love driving, so you get massive traffic jams. Um, getting car parking spaces for prime properties and prime locations is difficult. Um, so our blue tar building um, doesn't have the kind of ratio that you would ideally like, but it has three or four tram stops outside it, a tube station, buses going up and down the road, um, and we haven't found that to be a particular problem with that property. But the basic ratio 
that's applicable to Polish property, retail and offices, even though Poles love to be cardboard, is quite similar to the UK. So for a shopping center, you really want to have um, you know, somewhere between one car parking space for 25 square meters of retail space through to perhaps 35. You want that kind of ratio, one to 25 through to 35. Once it starts going above that, you're gonna have deficiency of car parking. Um, for the centre, and that applies to, to, to offices as well as shopping centres, I think, broadly. Thank you very much. Great. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening to me so patiently. Um, and if anyone, anyone's got further questions they'd like to raise after the meeting, please feel free to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes today's conference. Thank you for participating. You may now disconnect.